That's certainly not cranberry sauce. Let's get into it. my channel hope you're all doing well out there with thanksgiving being only a few days away i just wanted to wish all my friends out there that celebrate the holiday a very happy thanksgiving and i couldn't find a better way to celebrate than with a review of a little slasher film that takes place on thanksgiving but before we get into that slasher film do me a favor as i always please ask like comment and subscribe join me here i would appreciate that today we're going to talk about blood rage or as it was originally titled slasher which I watched this on Tubi last night, and that was the title card that was on the print that I watched last night was Slasher. But also I saw a print of this back on Labor Day weekend with my buddy Dale underscore from the Bat and Spider podcast when we went to Camp Blood at the Mahoning Drive-In in Lee Heighton, Pennsylvania. Dark, or Nightmare at Shadow Woods was the title of the print we saw at the Mahoning Drive-In. Now, this film got released in 87, March of 87, but... It was actually shot in 83, believe it or not. So it sat in the shelf for four years until it finally got a release. No, there's really no indication why that was, why it sat so long, but it took four years to hit the big screen. And it's rated R, with an, it's an hour and 22 minutes long. Actually, didn't rate it because it's an hour and 22 minutes long as well. Um, this film was directed by John Grismer, and he only directed one other film that was back in 77 called Scalpel, or the other name it went by was False Face. Um, the film actually sounds interesting. I don't mind seeking it out. It's basically about a plastic surgeon that went mad who's kind of psychopathic, but he finds this girl who's beaten an inch of her life and her face is all disfigured. And in his mind, he can recreate her face, reconstruct her face, look like his daughter. I've never seen the film, never actually even heard of it, but doing a little research on the director, he only directed one of the film and that was it. Sounds like an interesting premise. Wouldn't mind checking that out, actually. Now, the cast of this film is a bunch of people you've probably never heard of. I mean, Mark... Mark Soper plays Todd slash Terry, twin brothers. We'll talk about them in a second. Louise Lasser plays Maddie, their mom. Now, she's been in a ton of stuff. Most notable for people that are fans of the horror genre or things surrounding the horror genre. She was in Crime Wave, directed, directed by Sam Raimi in 85, and she was in Frankenhooker. Um, so, yeah, if you ever seen those films. But she has a ton of credits to her name. She's been around for a very long time, and she plays a mom in this film. Um, Mariana Cantor plays Dr. Berman in this film, and the only reason she's even in this film is she's actually a producer on this film. The actress they hired for that role never showed up to Jacksonville, Florida, where they shot this film. They shot this whole film in and around Jacksonville, Florida, except for the interiors of the drive-in. They shot that in Jersey, but the exteriors of the drive-in they shot in Jacksonville. Kind of odd they did it that way, but that's what they did. Yeah, she only took the role because she had to. They had no other choice. The actress they hired didn't show up, so that's why she's in the film. Now, this film actually does start off with a bang, figuratively and literally, kind of. Um, uh, Todd and Terry at the drive-ins with their mother, who's on a date with this guy. Why she decided to take her two boys who are sleeping in the back of the station wagon when the guy she's with wants to get frisky with the boys literally two feet away from them, and he wants to have sex with her. It's just crazy, crazy as all hell, but that's what's going on in this film. And uh, it's cool they started at the drive-in, and they show the interior of the drive-in, and this guy walks into the bathroom, and there's a guy in there selling things, and you would think it was drugs, but it's not. And that guy's none other than Ted Raimi in his first film appearance ever. But he's not selling drugs. He's selling condoms. Yes, condoms. He's hawking condoms in the bathroom at the drive-in. Well, if you're trying to practice safe sex, this is your man. He does have no speaking parts, doesn't say a word. But Ted Raimi does make his first on-screen appearance here in this film. Yeah, Todd and Terry wake up when their mom and their boyfriend start getting frisky. And they decide to leave the station wagon, as be known to their mother, and they start walking around the drive-in. Well, one of them, Terry, finds this hatchet, although really it's Todd if you go by the shirts. So there's a little bit of a, a goof with it, a little bit of continuality problem here, but that's okay. Now, Terry walks up on this other car, and this young couple are getting after it. And the boy, the guy that's on top of the girl, notices him standing there staring at him. And he goes, get the hell out of here, you little creep. And the and Terry takes the hatchet and smashes it right into this kid's face. And it continues to do so until his face is nothing but a bloody mess. And you see the slice in his face. And then he puts it in his brother Todd's hand, wipes blood across his face, starts screaming that Todd killed this kid. Meanwhile, the girl runs off buck naked into the woods, the poor chick. She's thinking, what the hell is going on? I didn't get the, <clears throat> the release I thought I was going to get. Um, again, this film starts with a bang, literally and figuratively. And that's how the movie starts. The mother takes Terry's side because Todd looks like he might be guilty. He's not saying a word. He's such in shock of what his brother just did. 
And we fast forward some time into the future. They're both adults now, but Todd is in an insane asylum where we see his mom visit him and have like a session with his doctor. And right around this time, it's Thanksgiving time. That's why we're reviewing it at Thanksgiving. Todd is starting to remember what actually happened that night. Up until this point, he has not been able to piece together exactly what took place that night. That's how much of shock it was to his system. And he starts telling his um, therapist that his brother is the one that killed that kid so many years ago and he never did anything. But his mother is so convinced she will not even listen to the therapist. She goes home to cook a nice Thanksgiving meal for Terry, her new fiance. She gets, gets, um, she just announces at this Thanksgiving dinner they're having with a few of their neighbors that they're, they're engaged to be married. And he runs this apartment complex, which is called Shadow Woods. That's why they titled it after um, Slasher Nightmare in Shadow Woods. And actually, they cut down a little bit of the violence in this cut. I actually saw this cut to Mahoney Drive, as I said earlier. And definitely watching this version last night on Tubi, the unrated cut with the Slasher title card. There definitely is more gore in this cut. And there's different scenes. The, the cut I saw actually ends a little bit differently. Um, me and Dale discussed it that night because him and his buddy Chuck from the Bat and Spider podcast had already went over this film a long time ago. And he even said when we saw it to the Mahoney, that was a different cut than what he watched for their podcast. And definitely watching it last night as it was originally intended, there definitely is some differences. I'm not going to really go into them here. But yes, there's definitely more gore in this version and more TNA for sure. There's a lot of TNA in this film. They don't shy away. Well, anyway, Todd breaks out of the insane asylum because he wants to warn everybody that his brother is actually the killer. And Todd, once he sees his mom and her new fiance getting a little frisky, that's what set him up in the beginning. Any kind of intimacy sets him off into a bloodlust. And he basically just starts going around his apartment complex killing people in very gory and graphic ways. But he's so for it. Like he's so like hyper and jovial about it. Like he's not, he's out of his fucking mind, but he's so happy what he's doing. And he's so proud of himself. And he's not like super serious about it. He's just like doing it. And his girlfriend is there and he's chasing her. He cuts this guy's head off, hangs outside his neighbor's apartment. He cuts his mom's new fiance's hand off while he's trying to drink a beer and then he props him up at his desk like this. So when his mom finds him, which is insane how long it takes this woman to figure out that his, he's dead. She's standing there talking to him. And she even pauses. And it takes forever for her to realize the guy's dead. I mean, this woman's either an idiot or this movie is... It is kind of funny. And uh, towards the end, his mom, Terry and Todd, end up in the pool fighting each other. And when T Terry gets out and Todd's out, she thinks Terry is Todd and she shoots him dead. And she's consoling who she thinks is Terry. And she goes, well, now Todd's dead and we don't have to worry about him anymore. And Todd goes, I am Todd, mother. I am Todd. And he gets up and walks away. And she takes the gun and blows her brains out. And that's pretty much the end of the film. Um, I got to be honest. Is this a great film? No. Is it one of the best slasher movies of all time? No. But I'll tell you what. It's entertaining as hell. And you could have a hell of a good time with it. It's definitely... B or Z grade stuff, but it's so much fun because it's so over the top. The acting pretty much is not that great, but there's some really cool gore effects. Not every gore effect works that well, but it's really gory and bloody. There's a lot of kills. It moves at a fast pace. It does become a little redundant as the film goes on, but I got to give Mark Sopel credit um, or Soper credit. He does well with the two roles. I mean, Todd is definitely like the geeky kind of weird kid. Although he's completely innocent. And when he's Terry, he's great as the killer. I mean, yeah, the lines, the dialogue aren't the greatest. But they're funny. Just like the line, that's not cranberry sauce. When he's like looking at the stuff on the blade on his machete. He says it multiple times throughout the film. There's copious amounts of nudity. Copious amounts of kills. The acting's not the greatest. Um, and, the, and the line delivery is cringeworthy at times. But this is just one of those films where you can turn your brain off. Put on. Have a good time with the body count and the over-the-top silly shit going on. And just have a good time with it. It's not, you know, one of the best slasher films of all time. It's not even close. But it's a film that you could put on and have a good time with. And I did enjoy it when I saw it at the Mahoning back in Labor Day. And I enjoyed it again last night seeing the alternate cut. Um, which is still 80, uh, 82 minutes long. Just like the other cut. So I don't know. There's just different scenes and less gore in the other one, I guess. From what I've read. Um, I don't know why... The different names, why they changed them up. Um, there's some th stuff online, but nothing concrete, so I'm not going to get into it here. 
Um, again, this was sh shot in and around Jacksonville, Florida. Ed French actually did the makeup effects for this film, and he did makeup effects on Sleepaway Camp. He worked on um, the stuff, Terminator 2, Creep Show 2. I mean, he, he's been around. He's still working to this day. He's been around for a very long time. Um, other than that, I have nothing else really. This is just a fun slasher film. Yes, it's over the top. It's cheesy as hell. At the end of the day, I had a good time with it. I'd watch it again and sit during the Thanksgiving holiday. And we don't have too many horror films that take place over Thanksgiving. So at the end of the day, I would give Blood Rage a 6 out of 10. It's not great. It's not a piece of shit. It's actually a very entertaining, fun slasher film. And you just turn your brain off and watch the madness unfold and have a good time with it. This is definitely one you can watch with your friends while you're drinking some beer and just have a good time with the movie as it unfolds in front of you. So yeah, 6 out of 10 for Blood Rage or Slasher or Nightmare at Shadow Woods, whatever you, however you can find it. Right now it's on Tubi for free. Yeah, 6 out of 10 for Blood Rage. If you ever seen this film, leave a comment down below, let me know. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe button, share this video, you're gonna appreciate that. I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving for you, those of you that are celebrating. Until next time, bye.